Alright, this is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living, and we're down in the indoor aquaponics system here for another kind of check-in. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of what has been growing best and kind of what to start your system with, uh, what grows best at the higher pH levels, which is where I'm at. I'm at 8.2 still and holding steady there since uh, just about since I started. So, um, so this will hopefully help you out if you're starting a system. Uh, or you're running a system at a higher pH, so you can kind of see what I've been planting. And I planted a little bit of almost everything, and uh, uh, just kind of figure out what's been growing the best at the higher pH. So what you're looking at here is what used to be the lettuce grow bed. It used to be filled with romaine lettuce and iceberg lettuce and leaf lettuce. And there's a couple pieces of lettuce still left in, left in here that I just left in to grow um, back here. But what happened is this, this bed just completely got overgrown. Um, it grew too high and I had too many plants too close together and the romaine lettuce was a tangled mess in there and some of it fell down in the water uh, and basically started to rot um, and uh, it, it was just a mess. It started to get fruit flies in here and stuff and you may be able to see a couple of them still. So I tore everything out. I wanted to start fresh in this, in this one. Um, and so what I have left in here is just some kale and... Uh, a couple pieces of lettuce and I also moved over some of these um, banana peppers and there's one back there and then there's another one um, right there and those seem to be growing pretty well too at the high pH so I'm gonna try to to grow those in this bed as well as I'm gonna put another one back here um, one of the things I've learned and I and I was experimenting a lot when I started off here but uh, spacing things out is, is hard cause it, you know you have limited space and so I wanted to cram as much as I could in here but um, it ends up being hard to manage when you do that. So, But uh, I'll throw a picture here of what I pulled out of just this grow bed alone of just lettuce. Oh, there's a lot of lettuce. Um, that ended up being a lot of it we, we composted. We used as much as we could. Uh, but it was a lot of lettuce. So um, I, I won't grow that much lettuce again. I'm going to try to do a little bit more variety of, of lettuce and just kind of plant a couple of them and just keep cutting them off. So uh, the lettuce was very good, though, and uh, we like that a lot. So, um, But some of the other things that have been have not been growing well, um, as you've known if you watch any of the other ones, the tomato plants are just... You know, they're starving of nutrients. They do not grow well in a pH over 7.5 for sure. Um, they are still growing, and I keep clipping them off. I mean, these things would be 9 feet tall by now if I let them grow. I just keep cutting the tops off and trying to keep them short. The, they keep growing taller, and then the bottom branches die. <laughs> so I keep trimming them off, and then you get some growth at the bottom. And I've had tomatoes set and stuff like that in here, and they they may have produced some tomatoes. They, they seem to be growing okay, just kind of slowly. Um, but the tomatoes definitely do not do real well. Um, this other tomato plant seems to be doing pretty good. This is a different variety, I think, of beefsteak. Um, it's starting to get a few flowers in that, but you can see, you know, and it grew over here into this, this grow bed, but it gets real yellow on the ends. And this one will start to die, I'm sure, too. So, um, Broccoli in the back there. Uh, if you focus there. That's growing awesome. I'm, I'm going to pull it out because I, there's just not enough room for it back there. That was one of those experiments I did at the beginning. And I had to pull the other one out because it got too big and it started to get messy back there, too. So I'm going to plant some pepper, some probably some more bell peppers back there. Um, the bell pepper here in the front has been doing awesome. Um I mean, it's got an amazing, you know, it's real sturdy. I mean, this plant will not move in here. It must have a great, great root system. It's got a real thick stem on it. And you can see there's probably about 15 bell peppers flowers started here. There's one and there's a bunch of, you know, there's obviously a couple that have flowered and 
So this thing has been doing awesome. There's another one here next to it. Um, this is a separate uh, separate plant, and that one's been doing great too. This one, they're probably a little too close together. I may spread those apart or just trim some of these leaves back, but um, the bell peppers are great. I mean, the leaves look real healthy, real nice and green. So this is one of those plants that I would definitely start your system with because, you know, this thing's been growing, growing great. And bell peppers do grow a little slower anyway. They have a long harvest season, and you generally have to start pepper seeds, you know, bell peppers, you know, eight or ten weeks before you you plant them outside because they do have a longer uh, longer uh, harvest time so um you know it's only first uh, beginning of may and uh we'll be having we'll have some bell peppers set on here uh, probably this week so so that's a good one um the oregano has just it's barely growing um it's growing but just barely so that's not one i would do um this bush bean i'm probably gonna when i clear out some more space in here i'm probably gonna plant about six more of these in here um these things are, are amazing these beans are so good um and this grew quick i mean it probably was just three weeks and from a seedling to where i had some beans growing on it um grew excellent in here we had a, a plate full of beans as you saw at the beginning of the, the video um the kids loved them i love you know they were really good so this will be some i'm going to grow a bunch of these and we're going to try to freeze some um some of those beans so the bush bean grew awesome supported itself in here pretty well i didn't need any extra support i've got this stick in here but it doesn't really need it um i have a cucumber growing in the back that those do not grow very well um it's this has been here for over a month probably closer to two maybe six weeks I would say um, it's flowering because I've got some bulbs in here that produce flowers but uh, or encourage flowering but uh, the plant itself is just barely alive so you know I'm leaving it in there just because I've got space back there right now but I'll probably pull that out um, again another tomato plant here and you can see still not doing real well um, again tomatoes is not something I would I'm, I'm gonna grow tomatoes all outside in the summer and that's something that's great you can freeze and can and stuff so um, i'm going to try to uh, optimize the aquaponics grow beds with some you know uh, things that i like to grow year round and things that will produce fruit year round and things that also grow, don't grow as tall so i'd like to try to keep like the bush beans and the pepper plants i think i can keep this managed down to a smaller level and stuff like that so um here i've got a bunch of stuff i'm going to spread out but um celery this is all celery in here. Seems to be pretty good so far. Now these are pretty small still, but these these are all celery. I've got Swiss chard back here. That's this. This seems to be doing really well, and I've read that that lives in a in a little bit higher pH, so that may end up doing okay. Um, I've got dill over here, which has been growing pretty well also. Um, not as good as as I have seen it grow in some outdoor gardens. It's still kind of not supporting itself very well, but it seems to be pretty healthy uh, and green, so that's good. Um, I've also got kind of a mess down here. I've got some onions growing, some chives and some white onions. These don't seem to be doing great. The chives are doing pretty well. Um, basil, you can see it's kind of yellow and not really growing very fast. Um, this is rosemary and seems to be okay, but it's not growing very fast. It's been here for like a month and it's just kind of the same size. So um, cilantro uh, back here as well. So. That seems to be doing okay, but the leaves are a little bit yellow. Um, the other thing that's kind of nice, the aquaponics system is awesome for um, seeding uh, or, or sprouting things from from plants. I, mean, I experimented with the onion, if you've seen a previous video. This is just a, a celery we bought at the store. You can see it down there. And we just you know cut it off at the base, and I just stuck the base in here, and about a week or two later, you've got another celery plant growing out of it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we're going to try to do that with a pineapple which probably won't do a real well again because of pH, but I'm going to test it out. And uh, so anytime you buy celery, you can just come down and pop it in. And then just, you know, in probably about six weeks to eight weeks, that'll be another full growing celery plant. And we can cut it off and it'll probably grow back again. So um, cauliflower here, this seems to be growing pretty well. Um, leaves aren't quite as green as I'd like, but, um, and this will probably end up being too big to be in here, but I just wanted to test it and see how well it would do. So, and just as a note, you cannot move things out of the aquaponic system. So once you plant something in here, you can't pull it out and plant it in soil. It just, it, it won't work. The way that the roots grow in the system here, they, um, you know, it, it just, they don't support and they don't, they're not strong enough to handle soil. Um, <clears throat> they grow, I think, you know, 
a lot weaker in this system because they're they have nutrients and water available so easily to them so all of the the focus goes on the plant and growing the plant quickly um, but uh, I've tried to transplant a few things into soil and it just does not work the only thing I've had very good success with has been the apple trees I threw apple trees in here I grew about three of them in the aquaponics system early on if you've seen the earlier videos the apple trees grew decent in here uh, and I was able to transplant there outside now and they're doing fine so those those did fine they're a harder root plant or tree obviously it's not a plant it's a tree so those did okay but any other plants i've tried to transplant out here they they just die um peas have been doing awesome and the only thing i haven't been able to do is get this thing to produce any flowers and i'm not sure why but that pea plant growing up the back there uh has grown into the window and just keeps kind of spreading out everywhere <laughs> so um, that has grown amazing, and that's just been in there for a month, uh, maybe maybe five weeks. But uh, so that that grew great. I would plant more of those, maybe all along the back. I could plant that and have them go up. But uh, if anyone has any ideas on how to, maybe it'll flower once it gets to a certain maturity. Um, I kind of expected it to flower because I do have the the bulbs in here that, that encourage that. But uh, it hasn't flowered anywhere that I've seen. So I might be missing something. It could be too warm or too cool. Um, I'll have to do some research on that. If anyone knows, go ahead and throw it in the comments because I wonder, kind of wonder what's going on with that. But um, I'm going to post a link to a couple resources that uh, gives lists of plants, uh, pH ranges that they grow best in. Um, however, I can tell you that there's a lot of mixed information out there. Uh, I tried to do some research myself, and I, there's just a whole bunch of different information. I mean, some of them say that bell peppers won't grow on anything above 7. Um, it's been 8.2 in here this whole time and this plant has never had a tr had trouble with anything. Same with um, a lot of the other things. It says broccoli doesn't, won't grow um, on anything over like 7 I think it is as well on a lot of the resources but that's been, gr those things grow crazy the broccoli has so um, you know, it's just kind of, I, I would I would go by what's worked here or what you've tried yourself and works over the resources but I'll put those in the description for you. So but overall, the system's been great. What's going to be happening next? Um, there's a lot of things I've learned over the last couple weeks, and I'm going to do a, a quick uh, update next week on some tips and tricks and things that I would change with the design of the system and also um, how I've kind of managed things and where to plant things and what to plant. So I'm going to talk about a few of those things next week, so look forward to that. And I'm also going to be putting in a swirl filter. I'm going to build a platform here and put a swirl filter, a swirl filter in here to get rid of solids. Um, and I'm also on an ongoing search for a new grow media here, and uh, I've looked at a few landscape supply places, and I've, uh, I'm looking for something unique, and I may come up with a, an idea um, of some, to way to reuse some recycled material or something else to use as grow media. Um, I'm not having a lot of luck finding anything that's pH neutral. I've gone and done the vinegar test on a bunch of different rocks from landscape places, and um, haven't had a lot of good luck, so... I'm stuck with the river rock that I have in here right now, and I'm just going to run with it and, uh, you know, do go with what grows best in it for now. And I'm looking for maybe some expanded shale at a place that I can get for cheap, or I'm going to try some uh, do some recycled material, maybe, um, uh, maybe uh, sanded glass or like beach glass or um, some other recycled material that I can come up with. So if you have any ideas for anything kind of creative off the wall, I'm not going to spend the money on clay, baked clay or... Uh, whatever that stuff is called, the expanded clay. That stuff is just way too expensive. It would cost $250 to fill this thing, and I'm not going to do it. Um, yeah, there's some other nice uh, nice material to use, but it's all real expensive. So uh, I'm going to try to do this a little cheaper. If you have any ideas, please feel free to, to provide them. I would love it. Um, subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot of cool videos coming out uh, this summer and a lot of gardening stuff, a lot of outdoor stuff, a lot of projects we're doing. Um, and uh, obviously we'll be doing the aquaponics updates every two weeks. So hit subscribe. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. And it just gets you updates on the, on the uh, aquaponics system. And um, hopefully you're following along. And uh, if you have any advice for me, please let me know. And hopefully you learned something. Hit the thumbs up on the video. That helps me out a lot to kind of know uh, what uh, is working best and what people like to, to hear about. Um, so please hit thumbs up if you enjoyed the video or found it informational at all. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Thank you for watching again and have a good one.